Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop. It's the series in which I'm teaching you Photoshop the way I wish it had been taught to me. Uh, I learned it the hard way, watching a lot of videos, watching a lot of convention speaking, and practice, practice, practice. This is how I would teach it to my past self if I had the opportunity, so I'm passing it on to you. Now today we're going to work on healing tools inside of Photoshop. Now we've already talked about the patch tool and I'm not really going to work with that one today. I'm going to work with other ones. But if you're not familiar with that tool and its functionality, I highly suggest you go back and watch that episode uh, so that you get the hang and feel of it. This image, like the previous image, is available for download from the website. I will put in the comment below and you can grab this raw and follow along at home and I highly suggest you do that. Uh, using a tool is better than just watching a video of me using a tool. Uh, and you'll, you'll pick it up pretty fast, and again, you're going to use this a lot. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to talk about the two flavors of the healing brush, some tips and tricks for using it, and also some gotchas behind using them. Uh, so by the time we're done with this episode, you should be pretty shiny when it comes to the use of this tool. So the first thing we're going to want to do is talk about strategy when healing an image. We are not going to work on the background layer just in case we're four or five hours into doing something big and then we screw up and we can't go back and undo something that happened say a couple hours ago. Uh, so we always want to duplicate this layer and work on either a copy, uh, in which case you just do control J. We talked about that shortcut before uh, and that will create a duplicate, but notice that it does double our file size. Now we're up to 137 meg. The other option with this tool is to just use a blank layer. If we use a blank layer and we hit J on our keyboard for our healing brush, this will allow us to work on this blank layer because we have the sample all layers checkbox checked. Now I use the proximity match flavor of this tool. You can change it depending on what you're doing and also mess with diffusion and some of these other settings. But I will tell you this setting here, proximity at a diffusion of five is where I leave it. I really don't have reason to change it. Uh, it works for me 90% of the time. So uh, let's, let's use it a bit. So I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna use the tool that is called the Spot Healing Brush. The difference between the two is one is supposed to be smart and the other one is kind of manual. Uh, so the Spot Healing Brush, uh, you kind of adjust your brush to the size you would like, like any other brush, and you would just go and kind of make circles around whatever it is you're healing. And this is fine. It does a pretty good job. Uh, it's somewhat magical. And you're like, wow, that is it's doing a, a pretty good job. Um, I find this to be pretty good, but uh, I think there are uh, better options in the other healing brush. So I don't tend to use it for skin. So uh, I can just get rid of this layer here and go back and create a new blank one and we'll start over. I do, however, love this tool for hair. And it's kind of a crapshoot as to whether or not it's going to work or not. But uh, if you just go and click on some of the, like these little hairs here, or these little dots in her hair, um, it does a pretty bang up job of matching the texture in the area around it and getting rid of it. Um, we can also do like hairs like this. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so I tend to use this in hair, uh, but I don't tend to use it on skin. It does tend to create sometimes weird little areas or edges around it. And I don't know, it's just not my, just not my fan. Okay, so what do we use? We use the other one. We use the healing brush tool. Now the healing brush tool is similar except you have to give it a source. So uh, by the way, I have current and below set. Um, you can also use this as all layers, which is what the other one is set to, by the way. Uh, I find current and below to be a little bit handier uh, because if this is in the middle of a layer stack and I have uh, other layers above this, the other one will sample from them and this one will not. Uh, current layer will give you nothing because it's a blank layer. Uh, so current and below is how I leave this one set. Again, diffusion of five. And we'll talk about aligned. So aligned, it means that when I sample, say I'm going to alt click here to heal here. Uh, if I'm using aligned, no matter where I go, that source spot where I'm healing will always stay the same distance and direction from my brush. If I use aligned and I alt click and then heal here and I go over here, it's going to heal from that same spot, that same source. This can be handy, uh, but most of the time you have to be very careful with this creating repeating patterns. And if you do that, your eye is going to pick up on them right away and it's just awkward for everyone. So I use aligned. Uh, so the secret to this tool is to, is to borrow from areas of similar value, meaning darkness and lightness. 
So if, for example, I'm working in this shiny area here, I'm gonna sample an area and in that shiny area and then heal with that area. And uh, again, I had, that was actually interesting because I did not resample and it tried to sample from that mark up here, which made a mark down here. So I'll find myself sampling almost every time between every mark, uh, the sampling, sampling, just trying to gr grab random locations of similar value. Sometimes, by the way, you just, you, you don't win. And notice I'm working pretty zoomed out. If you zoom in and work on this, I think you're kind of committing to a lot more time in the image because you're gonna pick up on a lot more uh, problems. And no one's gonna see it that large unless this is a huge canvas print or something along that lines, then I would probably take the time and go ahead and, and get in there. Uh, but in general, I work a little bit farther out than you would. And you wanna sample from, again, similar areas. Now, why we do that is because there's a different type of texture out here. So if we sample from a darker area into the lighter area, you'll notice that we get no texture. And conversely, if we sample from here and sample out here, we can create texture there. This is a way to repair places that are overly smooth. If, for example, there's a part of the skin that just appears to not have enough texture, it's a great way to fix it. Uh, but uh, in general, we're gonna wanna work from areas of similar value. And I just, I'm sampling almost every single time I put my brush down and I work kind of randomly. I let my eye guide me. So if I see something out of the corner of my eye, I just go and fix it and I hop around. Uh, other, otherwise your eye will get kind of tired. This is not high-end skin retouching. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a quick and dirty portrait retouching using a healing brush. This is not the way we would retouch for a very professional portrait or a very high paying client. This is quick and dirty. And you see, I'm, I'm having trouble in here. This is just not working. So I think I'd probably grab the patch tool here and say, you know what, right here, you're a problem. And notice, oh, this is an interesting problem. Notice that when I went to patch, it looks weird. And why is that? It's because we're patching from this layer. And this layer doesn't have a lot on it. It has this. I just alt clicked on the eyeball. So uh, that's not gonna exactly work. So I would have to patch from the background layer where there's actual pixels. And now you'll see that I have a place in front of it that's what I had repaired on this layer. Uh, so you run into these kind of oddball situations if you're mixing tools and mixing layers like this. Uh, there's a way to get around it that's just to flatten everything, uh, which means that you make everything one layer and work from there. Uh, not a good idea either. So just troubleshooting as I'm working here, I'm gonna go make sure I click back on this layer, hit J, oops, gotta actually click this one, and uh, try and just make that look as good as I can. But uh, again, it's just troubleshooting. If you, if you don't like what you see, undo, redo, until you like what you see. Uh, there's really no other answer to it at this point. Uh, we're gonna get into other tools later that help with that, but I don't wanna blow your mind all in one day. We wanna master this tool. All right, so I'm, I'm beating a dead horse there. All right, so let's move on and just kind of roar through the rest of this. And I'm just quickly healing anything that my brain sees. And we're almost done here with enough of this because you got the point already. Okay, so where are the gotchas with this one? Another one is like down in here, if I'm gonna heal this mark, I'd like to do it all in one swoop. So if I'm healing, I'm gonna try and create a source that's parallel to the mark. So if I sample here, my goal is to sample this swoop here. So when I actually heal it, it will heal borrowing that texture. Same here. So you kind of wanna think of the path that your brush is gonna take you through as it's healing. And if it's gonna take you through any additional marks, like for example, if I sample here and pass through this dark mark, trying to sample to repair this, I'm gonna make another dark mark. So just think ahead about the path that your brush is taking and uh, you'll, be, you'll you'll save yourself a lot of time and trouble. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of some of these darker patches. In general, I say that if it's a mark that's gonna be there for more than two weeks, don't remove it. Um, unless the person has asked you specifically to remove it, uh, there's a whole psychological train wreck that I'll get into in another episode when you over retouch an image. Uh, so in general, don't remove all the marks you can, just get rid of the ones that they're two weeks, you know, pimples and so on. Uh, you know, somebody, you know, slammed the side of their face against their, your door as they walked in, you probably remove that red mark, but uh, wouldn't get rid of any moles or anything like this. This, this makes the portrait look more real, by the way. I, I like that.
Um, this bra strap here, we can actually do the same thing, but I'll tell you near the edge of the image, this brush can get a little weird. Uh, so first of all, if we sample too low, uh, we're gonna run into a situation like this, where my sample went off the edge and I end up with, I'm sampling basically from the artboard behind. Uh, so when we're attacking the corner, we know we kind of want to be a little higher than where we're healing. Uh, so we don't run into that situation. And you see that we, we picked up a dark mark here as we were healing. It's fine to take more than one pass to heal something. Don't feel the need to do it all at once. You can go back and sample another area and just fix the part that's problem and we're done. Uh, so don't feel that you have to try and heal it all in one mark or it just doesn't count. It's fine. Again, I'm just looking for what my eye sees and I'm just gonna sample and repair. Uh, not get too close. I didn't like that one. I like that one. And sometimes it takes a couple shots and that's fine. This tool is a little, I don't know, picky. And, and sometimes you'll get a good result and sometimes you won't. It's fine. Pick a different sample, resample it again. It has come a long way. Uh, and I like the fact that I can pick where I want to heal from instead of letting Photoshop do it for me like it does with the other tool. So here's our before and after on um, what we've done. And it's subtle enough that um, I'm happy with it. Okay, so now you have enough tools to be able to heal skin in a realistic way without going overboard. You know, stop, <laughs> stop before it gets too bad. And obviously I did this one pretty quickly. You can take more time if you would like. Uh, but this will give you enough information to use this tool with some confidence and uh, produce some much more refined imagery. Remember, keep skin realistic. Don't try and cover up every pore or every freckle because people expect to see that. Uh, remember, we're all human and we expect to look into a human face and see human features. Don't try and mess it up unless, of course, that's your goal. Uh, then feel free. You are an artist after all, so do whatever you would want. Uh, so if you're uh, new to the series, I will put a link to the entire series down below so you can watch that from the beginning. But otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you would take the time to please click the like, I would love that to say one out of every hundred viewers actually bothers to take the time. And it's very important to the success of these videos. If you want to see more of them, that is a great way to show your appreciation. So take care and I'll catch you next time.